start with your retinopathy of prematurity clinical pulse. Uh, Dr. Raksha, is it okay? So you may share your slide, uh, share your screen, Dr. Lalit. Sure, ma'am. Is my screen visible, ma'am? Yes, it is visible. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. So when we talk of retinopathy of premature, the first thing is. Uh, why do we want to talk of ROP? Around more than 30,000 preterm babies are see, seen to be having visual impairment due to ROP worldwide in 2010. In the last 30 years, the prevalence of moderate and severe vision loss and blindness due to neurological disorders has increased from 13 to 35%. In 2009, ROP caused more than 100,000 cases of visual impairment and 25,000 blindness. And it is predicted that by 2050, the prevalence of vision loss due to ROP will be more than 100 per 1 lakh population. And among which more than 43 will be blind out of 1 lakh population. So what is ROP? Is it a congenital disorder? No, it's not a congenital disorder. It develops after the child is born. It usually takes three to four weeks to develop. Normally when a child is born premature, the retina is not completely grown. Once it is exposed to the normal oxygen of the atmosphere, there is a down regulation of vascular endothelial growth factor leading to sudden stoppage of the growth of retinal vessels, which is the vasoobliterative phase of ROP. After a week or two, when the retina keeps developing, there is an attempt to vascularize this developing retina. And during this, in the absence of adequate oxygen, there is upregulation of VEGF. And with this, the vessel tends to vascularize the avascular retina. During this attempt, if it grows normally, there is no ROP. However, if there is abnormal growth of these retinal vessels, there is a chance of development of retinopathy of prematurity. The last 20 years, we have the classification of retinopathy of prematurity given by the International Classification of ROP Group. Recently, in 2021, they had added, apart from zone one, two, and three, they had added a subdivision of zone two, that is zone two posterior, which is an area which starts from the junction of zone one and zone two, and which extends to this diameter from that junction. This zone two posterior area is supposed to have an increased risk of further progression and further damage if not treated. So this is why this area has been specifically classified as zone two posterior. And in future, it is expected that we use this terminology so that we, in especially in research purpose, so that we come to know how, what is the outcome of observation versus treatment in several stages of disease of ROP. In the recent classification, they have talked more about the plus disease and the pre-plus disease. Whenever we encounter these babies of ROP, it is not very easy to decide on the plus disease and pre-plus disease. These six images are from the ICROP third edition, which can be used. The figure A, B, and C have been graded by majority of the researchers as being not plus disease. That is, it is mild plus disease because it has some component of vascular toxicity, but they do not mark up to the definition of plus disease. However, figure D, E, and F are actually the plus disease that's indicating severe disease. Aggressive ROP previously called as aggressive posterior ROP was thought to be mainly localized in the posterior segment. However, now it is understood that aggressive ROP can be seen in any zone. 
it actually has prominent plus disease ill defined demarcation line and flat networks of proliferating new vessels this disease needs to be treated early so treatment of rop is mainly needed for severe rop stage 4 and 5 rop needs vitreoretinal surgery threshold disease which was the indication for treatment of rop used in the cryo rop study which showed that cryotherapy was superior to observation then came the et rop trial the early treatment rop trial which showed that early peripheral laser before the eyes goes into threshold disease had better outcome as compared to waiting till the eye develops into threshold disease the et rop classified this group as pre threshold disease and this high risk rop that is a time one rop needs early treatment that includes zone 1 stage 3 rop without plus zone 1 any stage rop with plus and zone 2 stage 2 or 3 rop with plus disease and these require treatment within 24 to 48 hours in 2011 we got the out results of the beat rop study which showed that monotherapy with intravitreal bevacizumab had a better outcome in stage 3 plus disease in zone 1 but not in zone 2 similarly the rainbow trial and the rainbow extended trial had showed that monotherapy with ranibizumab was superior to laser in treating these rop babies one should be very careful while going through this study because 31% of the babies receiving ranibizumab received additional post baseline treatment to get a favorable outcome so these babies are likely to have progression as well as recurrence so a good follow up and treatment will be required in such babies so laser needs skills with indirect laser ophthalmoscopy also it needs support of sedation and general anesthesia if one cannot laser under topical anesthesia and for larger babies the efficacy of laser is proven as in etrop group anti vgf has a benefit especially in the zone 1 severe disease however there is a issue of skill of injection in the small babies also it is associated with local complications like endophthalmitis and systemic complications which are yet to be studied in detail here we can see the top two features are showing a zone 2 stage 3 plus disease which after treatment with laser here we can see the rop has regressed you can see that the dilatation and tortuosity of the vessels have started decreasing one week after treatment this is another patient of aggressive rop in which an extensive laser was done and we could see though the laser marks are all over it now sparing the macula but the disease has regressed this is another baby with zone 1 stage 3 rop with a component of going into 4a this baby was treated with treated with laser therapy and was referred for vitreoretinal surgery however unfortunately the patient lost to follow up they did not go for a vitreoretinal surgeon but luckily the disease stopped with the sequelae of fractional detachment nasal to the disc this picture shows the treatment of an aggressive rop with anti vgf here we can see the inferior two pictures that is post anti vgf injection pictures in which the plus disease has gone down significantly one week following injection with anti vgf the regression of rop has been very well described in the new latest third edition of icrp classification that is the vascular signs as clearly seen in this picture the dilatation and tortuosity as seen in the superior pictures have come down significantly this indicates regression other vascular signs include 
new vascularization, vascularization of the avascular retina. Other signs include regression of the tunica vascular solentis, better dilatation of the pupil, and better media clarity. The injection of anti vis in such small babies should be very careful, and the safer ROP protocol helps in guiding us in this. That is, use of short needle, antiseptic betadine, follow up in two to seven days post injection. Extra attention should be cared to maintain cleanliness of the environment, assess for local infection, and determine the right site that is around one mm posterior to the limbus. Recheck, reevaluate the babies in one to two weeks. And especially these babies should be examined with a FFA at 60 to 65 weeks post-menstrual age to look for peripheral avascular retina and new vascularization and treat with desert if needed. Also the ICROP, this edition has come up with the reactivation details with the treatment with laser if treated adequately, the reactivation is rarely seen. However, with the use of anti-VEGF, Reactivation of the disease is not at all uncommon. It can be seen at the initial site of ROP lesion or at the leading site, leading edge, or it can be present as in seen in figure F at the previous site as well as the leading edge of the vascularization. This picture shows a case of zone one stage three ROP with the component of plus disease on the left side. And in the right side picture, we can see after anti-VEGF, the ROP lesion has regressed and there is a development of anastomosis at the site of stage three ROP. Anteriorly, if you see, the vessels have started growing, but then again, there is a stage one reactivation in the form of demarcation line anteriorly. So this picture has both regression as well as reactivation seen with anti-VEGF treatment. There are long-term sequelae with ROP, which we have to be careful. Retinal detachment, persistent avascular retina, retinoscisis, macular anomalies, and retinal vascular changes. If we aim to have a nice collaboration with the pediatrician, neonatologist, and have a good referral system, we can aim to screen these babies on time and treat them on time so that we can avoid long-term sequelae and prevent visual loss in these babies. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lalit. Uh, 